So hello people, today we are going to discuss about serology. So serology is that branch of forensic science which basically deals with biological evidences. The identification and detection of bodily fluids like blood, semen, saliva, etc. are the part of serology. So now I am not going to discuss complete branch in a video. So I am going to take a chunk of serology and today we are going to discuss about the reagents and immunochromatographic acid. So first we'll talk about reagents. We have two reagents in serology that is the immunogen and immunoglobin. Talking about immunogen, these are the substances which are capable of electing the formation of antibody in any body. So most of the time the people are confused in the terms immunogen and antigen. So let us clear the difference first. So immunogen are basically, as I said, are the substances which are capable of electing the formation of antibody in any body, whereas antigen are the substances which are capable of reacting with that antibody. Immunogen are capable of electing the formation as well as reacting, and antigen are capable only of reacting. So we can simply say that all immunogen are antigens, but all antigens are not immunogens. Now we will take a closer look to the structure of immunogen. This is the structure of immunogen. We, will, we have epitope A and epitope B. Epitope are basically the sites where the antibody comes and reacts. Attached, bind, basically reacts. The epitope can be one, two or more than two. So this in this example, I have taken two epitopes. This is a multivalent epitope condition. Now we'll talk about the antibodies. So antibodies are basically we are all aware of. Our immune responses are antibodies. First immune response is IgM, IgM antibody M. So actually immunoglobins or antibodies are the responses of our human defense system which are against any foreign antigen entered in a body. So first of all we know that immunogen are actually of nine isotopes. It has nine isotopes. IgA 1 and 2, IgG 1 to 4, IgM, IgE, IgD. So basically IgM, IgG sorry, IgG is most abundant antibody present in our body and IgM is the antibody which is produced as the primary response when any foreign antigen invades our body. So first of all, so now we will take look of IgG, closure look of IgG. This is IgG. We can see that IgG are actually two chains, the heavy chain and the light chain. Heavy chain basically consists of the FAB fragment and the FC fragment. FC and FAB. Whereas the light chain only consists of FAB fragment. These are the hypervariable regions, the three regions I have marked. These hypervariable regions are the regions where it has the most antigen binding capacity, the capacity to bind with epitopes. Okay, so these are basically joined by disulfide bonds, and this is the hinge region. It can actually move like this according to the formation of epitopes. It can bend its structure like this. So, why are we talking about serology? Why are we talking about antigens and antibodies? Why we are talking about immunogens and immunoglobins? So, have you ever seen that there are certain kits, rapid, specific, sensitive kits available in the market where, uh, where there is a bell like structure on the end and there is a, a screen like structure which represents the lines, which uh, presents the lines if the body fluid is present or not. You know, have you ever wondered what is the mechanism behind those kits? Why, how are they so fast and how are they so sensitive and specific? These are actually based, these kits are actually based on immunochromatographic assays. Immunochromatographic assays. These are actually based on the binding capacity of our uh, immunoglobin and the antigen. First of all, let me show you the antigens present in different type of body fluids which we are going to use in immunochromatographic assay. Blood have HB and GPA, glycoporin protein. Semen has PSA 
prostate specific antigen in sg cyanogenin cimenogenin saliva has hsa saliva alpha minus urine has tph sweat has ddc dermacidin and menstrual blood is d dimer and ldh what are actually antiglobins yes there is a difference between immunoglobins and antiglobins basically immunoglobins are also actually capable of eliciting the formation of antibodies in any other foreign body let's say for example i took my immunoglobin and i injected in a rabbit for instance i injected in the body of rabbit so the body of rabbit will form its other antibodies which are against the response of my foreign immunoglobin so we can also say that immunoglobins also have antigenic properties also have immunogenic properties immunoglobins which are formed in response of a foreign um, immunoglobin in a body are known as antigens so talking about immunochromatographic assay these are basically in four steps the first step is these are the epitopes of the antigen this antigen can be any antigen as written here so we will talk about hb antigen so for example consider this antigen as a hb and this is any labeled label labeling can be flow, uh, color colorimetric labeling labeling can be radioactive labeling can be fluorometric okay so this is a labeled anti uh, globin label antibody okay so now we mix the two of them in a sample we mix the two of them in the in sample and this is the formation of a label anti hp antibody label anti hp anti globin or antibody okay now there are two zones test zone and control zone when we talk about test zone there is a formation of a sandwich like structure where the labeled anti body label anti body binds with an immobilized anti body which is not labeled okay with the help of the antigen okay so this form an ab hb ab sandwich okay so this presence of this sandwich indicates a pink line in the test zone pink line in that kit we have in that kit we have well on one side where we put the sample and we have a screen on one side which have test zone and control zone so there is a pink line in the test zone if the sandwich the presence of this sandwich is detected and the presence is detected due to the presence of this labeled anti ab now we will talk about the control zone in control zone the label and the remaining uh, label antibodies which are not bind with the antigen binds with immobilized unlabeled antibody okay the remaining antibodies which are not bind with antigens bind with the remaining immobilized antibodies at control zone okay so the formation of this structure and detection of this structure makes the uh, presence of uh, indicates the presence of a uh, pink line in control zone region there is a presence of blood in the given sample then there should be the presence of both pink lines in the test zone as well as in the control zone and if there is absence of blood in the sample there will be presence of pink line only in control zone and not in test zone because there will not be a formation of ab hb ab sandwich so to uh, to give it this whole process of the immunochromatographic assay we can instantly sensitively and specifically detect the presence of any body fluid by exchanging the antigens which can be hb psa hsa tph ddc d dimer respectively so this is all for my video thank you i hope you enjoyed it